wear a mask. And I spit a lot, so there's no one in the front row. But uh, I've had to wear a mask, these headphones, glass. My ears are not big enough to carry that amount of weight. So, but it's good to be with you on Christmas. How things change. How things change. But hands up, who's still waiting for a package to arrive? Who's still waiting for a package to arrive that did not arrive? You haven't done your work, have you? So you didn't uh, get stuff early enough. I'm waiting for a package too. There's always that one package uh, tracking it online. It's always the way it is. And uh, you're waiting for it. It, it's, It's in Perth. You've got the tracking thing and it says, it's in Perth. And you go, yeah. And the next minute, it's in Adelaide again. And then it's sending you, your package is on the beach in Queensland sending you pictures of it having a pina colada. And you think, when's that package going to arrive? And I'm waiting for one more package. And you know the way you're like the, the cat at the window watching the Star Trek truck go past your house. <laughs> it's not coming here, but and it keeps driving. And so I am actually waiting for one more package to arrive. Whoa, here delivery. we go. Delivery. Last minute delivery. Whoa. Steve McAlpine, is that you? That's me. Just you can't get this sign here. Sorry yeah. about the delay. Well, that's just okay. Sign here, initial there. And my PIN number. What's yeah. with all these people there? <laughs> anyway. Thank you. Have a good Christmas. Yeah, don't leave oil in the driveway. They always leave oil in the driveway, don't they? Always. So this is the package I was waiting to arrive. And uh, they do say never work with uh, small animals and children in Hollywood. And I think also never work with a package that you haven't packed. So we'll see how this goes today. But at Advent, whatever other package you've received, this is actually the one we've been waiting for. We've gone through Advent the last four Sundays in the lead up to Christmas. And our series theme, if you're new here today, if you're a visitor, welcome along. But Advent's the four weeks leading up to Christmas. And traditionally, they're about hope, peace, joy, and love, the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. But this package here contains everything we need at Christmas. This is the complete package. And when Dan began our series a month ago, he spoke on hope. And one of the things I was hoping that was that we could get through Christmas without, well, without this, right? But here's what Dan said about hope, and it's quite prescient, but it applies equally to all four of the weeks that we've had leading up to us, hope, peace, joy, and love. Dan asked this question. Is it possible that the foundation of my hope, peace, joy, and love is built on something I have manufactured or have to maintain? The things I desire, the the hopes I have, the, the love I'm looking for, is it something I have to create and then manage? And then he went on to say this. Here's how you'll know if it is based on something you have to manufacture or maintain. It can either be taken away or it relies on you and the efforts of others to exist. And if we answer yes to any of this, then there's a chance that we'll always be waiting for the perfect package, always be waiting for the right hope, the right peace, the right joy, and the right love. It'll be like the spiritual Star Trek truck driving past all the time, just always a little bit out of reach. But at Advent this year, as we've talked about it, we're kind of waiting for something to arrive that can't be snatched away from us. Because so much else can be. You only were watching the news the last few days and you're going, please don't put my holidays on ice, Premier. Please don't put my holiday. I, I need that holiday. I hoped we could go on a holiday, but here we are. Or we might be able to love each other well at lunch this year. Finally, will there be peace among my family this year? It seems so fraught, so tense, so tight. Well, perhaps like many people at Christmas, I don't feel much joy, but next year might be different, right? All of that is like waiting for a parcel that never quite arrives. Or when it does, the hope peace, joy, and love looks like, I ordered this on Amazon, but it doesn't quite look like the hope, peace, joy, and love that I was hoping for. The hope, peace, joy, and love in our world, as we have seen over the last couple of years, is very, very fragile. You shake that box too much and you'll hear glass breaking. 
But this package at Advent, this package is different. Four weeks leading up to Christmas, and Christmas Day announces the arrival of everything we've been waiting for. When it comes to hope, peace, joy, and love that we don't need to maintain or manufacture, I want to tell you today, Jesus is the complete package. Jesus is the complete package. And the Bible tells us that in many ways, but here's one verse that particularly nails that issue. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 1.20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Do you see what that's saying? When it comes to God's promises of delivering us hope, peace, joy, and love, he always delivers and delivers on time. Jesus, according to the Bible, is God's complete package. He's the yes to the whole package that we're looking for. And Christmas reminds us of it starkly and beautifully. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And Christmas is a time to make promises and sometimes a, an occasion where people break promises, isn't it? You know, we had a prime minister once who separated, do you remember this? Core promises from, finish it, Non-core promises, otherwise known as lies, right? Uh, core promises and non-core promises. These are the things I can deliver on that I've promised, and these are the things that I can't deliver on eventually that I did promise, but over time we will see that I wasn't able to deliver on. And the Bible says that no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ, because God doesn't do core and non-core promises. And the Bible shows that. All of God's promises are yes. Now, what's the first promise that we're going to look at? It's the promise of the first week, which was hope. Now, this is going to get tricky over time, I think, as I unpack this package. Hope is something that God promised to the world. In Genesis 12, verse 3, what happens is that Israel is in a terrible state. Or not Israel, God's people... Abraham, God's person that he chooses, is the only person that God's looking around at and thinking, who am I going to choose to lead my promise? And he chooses Abraham, who's not even thinking about God at the time. And God is going to bless the world through Abraham. God is going to put everything right that has gone wrong so far in the story. And he chooses Abraham and he says, I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you in a land and I'm going to bless you and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And God makes that promise because at that time, there's curse around the world. There's death. There's people going their own way. And God promises right back at the start of the story of the Bible, his hope is that he will bless the whole world through Abraham. God promises, I will put this thing right. And that's exactly what God does in Jesus. All of the hopes and fears, as we sing, of all the years are met in the town of Bethlehem in Jesus at Christmas. God does not have core and non-core promises. All people on on earth will be blessed through you, says God to Abraham. And hundreds of years later, it's fulfilled in Abraham's far distant descendant, the Christ, Jesus. Now, here's where it gets tricky, because I'm going to peel off this package and see if there's anything inside. We shall see. There's a box. When one of my brothers got married, we um, had a large box transported to our house so he'd come round and uh, see it. And we, it was a fridge box. And we said to him, what's inside has, is cold at the centre and it sort of, um, it makes strange noises at odd times of the day for no reason. 
and it hasn't changed much in style over 50 years. And he took off the box and there was my twin brother standing there from England. <laughs> Cold, frozen and dead. <laughs> oh, there's another box inside. That was relatively easy. We'll see if it gets harder as we go. But this one says peace. Peace. The peace package. What does it say about the promise that God is going to bring, the hope that he's bringing? It's going to be through a person. And it says this in Isaiah 9. This person has been described at a time when Israel is in terrible strife. The nation has grown from Abraham to many thousands of people, but they have rejected God and their enemies are upon them. And it doesn't seem much like blessing. It doesn't seem much like hope. And then God says, I'm going to bring someone along who's going to transform the nation. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God promises a leader a package in his hope that's going to be about peace. Peace coming to the earth and the Prince of Peace. And it's something we look for in our world, isn't it? And I think when COVID started, we were thinking, we'll all settle down and be very peaceful, and we'll all do everything the same way. And it feels like everyone's a little bit edgy, a little bit angry, a little bit frustrated. It feels like there's not a lot of peace. But this Christmas is a great reminder that God comes to us and brings us peace through the Lord Jesus. Peace with himself, to end that war between God and humans that was causing those wars between humans and humans. All of God's promises are yes in Jesus. All of God's promises are yes in Jesus. Now we'll see what's... Like, do you rip the paper or do you fold it for another year? We should divide rip, paper rippers, paper folders... The first church of paper folders, the first church of paper rippers on that side. Another box. Another package. Apparently, the smaller the package, the better the joy. There you go. It says joy. on. The, if there's someone called joy in there, that's going to be problematic. What's the most joyful present you ever bought at Christmas? Can you remember? 27 years ago, today, I bought the smallest present I could for Jill. She was most grateful. Uh, and then it was the last present we handed out in our house. Alan and Anita, my parents-in-law, uh, now, uh, at their house. And Alan runs Christmas-like military-style handing out presents. And we left this present to the last possible moment. And it was an engagement ring. Wow. Got engaged on Christmas Day. Truly joyful. My mum still didn't realise. I thought you were buying her a necklace, you know. And it took Alan and Anita about 25 years to get used to me, but here we are. But what does it say in Luke 2? The midst of a terrible occupation by the Romans in Israel, in the midst of a time when God has not spoken to the nation by a prophet for 400 years. And the shepherds are in the field at night. That's always a sign, too, that it's dark. <laughs> They're not expecting anything to happen that's going to change their joy. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Perhaps you're sitting here today and you are, at Christmas, not feeling joyful. Because you've tried to manufacture and maintain a joy that is so, so fragile in this world. The promise of God that is yes in Jesus is that joy can come to you from a source outside you that will never leave you. It does not say, for some of the people who are good, 
who've got their act together, who are the cream of the crop. It comes to shepherds in a field starting there at the bottom of the food chain in Israel and works its way up and works its way across from Israel 2,000 years ago to Perth today because the initial promise of hope was that the whole world would be blessed by what God was bringing. It doesn't seem that he has any core and non-core promises. It seems like God delivers at every stage of the story as he goes along. Is there one more package? I'm going to take this home, fold it, and iron it later, okay? So. Oh, yeah. Love. We looked at love last week. A carol service. And what did we read? This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. When it comes to core and non-core promises, we're the ones who can't keep them. Not God. We're the ones. God's people, when he saves them in the Exodus event when they come out of slavery in Egypt, they say, all of God's commands we will keep. And then they build a golden calf <laughs> because it wasn't a core promise. They wanted to do things their own way. And that is how humans have behaved. Not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us. Some will build their golden calf some will find the object of their love and adoration in other more sophisticated golden calves. And we live in a place that has got a golden calf production line for us not to love God, but to love the things he's given us rather than him. Yet the scripture tells us this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and gave his son as an atoning sacrifice of our sins. He loves us even though we don't deserve it, even though we don't deserve him. That's hope, peace, joy, and love. And they're great things. They're great things, but maybe there's something else. See, at the centre of all that is Jesus, isn't it? The centre of all the package is Jesus. And if you look for hope, joy, peace and love without him, it's kind of an empty box in the middle of this, the package. Jesus is God's complete package. He's everything we need because all of God's promises are yes in Jesus. They're wrapped up in him. He's the centre of them all. You pull the box apart and it's, ta-da, Jesus. Here's another way of putting this. In the midst of all the turmoil, our hope, peace, joy and love does not have to be manufactured or maintained by us if it were, we'd still, that Star Trek truck would still be going past. We can't get it. We'd be looking out mournfully thinking, will it arrive today? And if it does arrive today, will it be enough? Will it be the right package? God delivers all of these things to us in spades. That's the challenge at Christmas whether you can manufacture and maintain those packages in your life without Jesus or whether you realise that you need Jesus at the centre of the package 
for those things not to be fragile. So what's our response? Look, I saw two responses to Christmas in the newspaper this week. The same newspaper in the Australian. Very different takes on Christmas, very different takes on Jesus. And for one of the responses, Jesus is a good addition to the life you already have. Your hope, peace, joy and love are all stacked up, but if you want a little Jesus package from time to time, you can add that to the mix. But for the other response, Jesus is at the centre and purpose of our hope, peace, joy and love. The first response was by an author, writer, philosopher, journalist called Luke Slattery, who I read quite often in the paper. And he said in his article, basically, Christmas is important, but just for the ideas of it. Just for the ideas. The ideas of Christmas are more important than the person. And he said this, I wonder to what extent even the most committed Christians are really signed up to the traditional religious narratives and imagery. I doubt many believe, for example, in Christ's miracles. And I say he should get out more <laughs> and ask some Christians. <laughs> That's not journalism. <laughs> Do some investigation. But at the core of it was if Jesus isn't at the centre, someone has to be. Someone has to be. And for Luke Slattery, great though he thought Christmas idea was, at the centre of that package is us. The challenge, he says, is to raise and enlarge the self, to move the mysteries at the periphery of daily existence to the core of consciousness to raise and enlarge the self, to try and make that hope, peace, joy, and love matter. <laughs> this is a manufacture and maintain model of all those things, and it's co-opting Christmas to do it. And we worship a God who became a baby. Rather than raised, came down. Rather than large, a mewing baby boy. It's the opposite of the package that God delivers. And you, you, here's the thing about it, isn't it, though? I'm not sure, reading that, if you're grieving this Christmas is really what you want to hear. I don't know, to know if you're grieving or hurt raising and enlarging the self is good news. It sounds good until you realise that the centre of the package is fragile old you. And all the fragilities and fears you have about you and yours and what might happen. There'll be plenty of grief this Christmas in Australia, for whom the package with you at the centre won't cut it. It's just too much weight for you to bear. That's not the only response in the Australian, and let me finish with this. Yesterday in the Australian, Greg Sheridan, the author, the foreign editor of the Australian, wrote an article called 160 Pages That May Change Your Life. And he picked out 160 pages from his New Testament. And he said, I dare you this year to read 160 short pages that would change your life. Parts of the Gospel, parts of the letters of the New Testament. And I know Greg... I befriended him a few years ago and he interviewed me for his first book. And at the time he said I'm a, his experience was he's a, a ropey Irish Catholic. And I thought, great, I'm a ropey Irish Protestant. We should start fighting. <laughs> but he's moved to someone who in his own admission in his last two books has discovered 
that Jesus does not just talk about hope, peace, joy and love. He is those things. He is those things. Jesus is our hope. He is our peace. He is the joy, Jesus' joy of man's desiring, says the old hymn. And when it says God is love, how do we know? Jesus. For Greg Sheridan, over time, Jesus has become the complete package. And he says exactly the opposite. It's perhaps worth listening to to what Luke Slattery says. The early Christians didn't think theirs was a mind-body wellness movement. Just a little bit of spirituality on the side. But a divine revelation that gave purpose, meaning and transcendence to life. It's not about what we can craft. It's not about a hope peace, joy, love package that we can put together and hope doesn't break. It's about God revealing himself to us and making all his promises come true in Jesus. That's the package. He's the complete package and he's at the centre of it. Any other joy, peace, hope and love you have has to be manufactured and maintained by you. So the real challenge today is not to enlarge ourselves but to make much of Jesus. Is Jesus just one more package that could land on the doorstep of your personal life project that you seemingly have control over to enable you to get what you want and do what you like? Or is he, as the Bible says, God's complete package that transforms us, that gives us hope, that fills us with joy, that shows us what love is like and gets us to model it, and that is the peace that we need in this world at Christmas? Are you confident? you can manufacture and maintain enough hope, peace, joy and love to get you through the next year, never mind the next two decades? Or will you decide that Jesus is the complete package? All of God's promises are yes in Jesus. And as Greg Sheridan found out, and perhaps you might find out today, Jesus is that package that you've been waiting for so longingly. How about we pray? Then I'm going to clear up this mess or leave it to someone else like I do every Christmas. And then we're going to sing about this great Saviour. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much that Jesus is our hope, peace, joy and love. In a world that seemed hopeless, where we rebelled against you, you gave us hope, promised us a blessing. Where there was war and misery, you announced a prince of peace. And where there was sorrow and conflict, you promised joy. And most of all, you showed us in Jesus love. We pray, Lord God, that we will go from here today, whatever we do, opening packages, having fun, remembering that Jesus is the complete package. May it be true in our lives. May we have to wait no longer. In his name we pray. Amen.